Please use the link below to get the notes, questions and other videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like, As the structures change, which kind of hormone are being produced? The emptographian follicle, and then it's being changed to corpusolium, and then now it's either uh, uh, will degenerate or it will continue being big, depending on whether the person is pregnant or the person is not pregnant. So here we are seeing that the female sex organ, <clears throat> the female sex organs uh, are found in the lower part of the abdominal cavity, the space of the abdomen. Yes, that's the meaning. Are made up of the covering called germinal epithelium. It means that the outside lining of the ovary, we call them germinal epithelium. <clears throat> when you call them germinal, it means that they can have ability to give rise to other structures. Germ, germ, it means cells, very small cells which have ability to grow with a large number of follicles. So it means that inside you have many follicles. You have many of them in uh, German epithelium produced by the follicle. So now we are saying that this process, this produces. Now these follicles, when they try to develop, they now they produce what called the ovum. This uh, produces ova during the process called oogenesis. So production of of them is called oogenesis. And we, say, we saw that, and the production of sperms, we call it spermatogenesis. So, oo is, is being derived from the word ovum. When you say oo, this is, it is derived from the word ovum. Genesis means uh, beginning. Yeah, so it means that beginning of the ovum or the, the, the start of the ovum. So the follicle secret, now, once this uh, graphene follicle develops, 
Once it develops, it, as it develops, it starts to produce a structure called um, a hormone called estrogen. And then now, uh, this estrogen, this follicle, once the ovum is being released, it changes to corpus ileum, and then now the corpus ileum will start to produce another hormone called progesterone. It means that um, hormone from structure A, hormone from structure A is going to be estrogen, and then hormone from structure C is going to be progesterone. It's going to be progesterone. So you have to know those two differences that uh, estrogen is being produced by graphene follicle while uh, progesterone is being produced by corpus lorium. Puberty in males. We saw, yeah, puberty in males. So if you look at uh, this uh, male, uh, this means that these are the secondary sexual characteristics. The characteristics you obtain, which show that now you are what? You are a mature, mature, person yes what are some of those characteristics which show that now you are a mature person so number one puberty is the period in humans in which they are experiencing the what called a physical change physical change in their bodies in order to be capable of sexual reproduction so if you see the following structures we're going to be talking about the mean is that um you, when you're a guy you're a guy and then you are tampering uh, sex you are going to impregnate someone and then if you go to lady side uh, if you're a lady and then you have these characteristics you're going to be talking about uh, in female then if you tamper with the sex then you're going to become pregnant it means that you are sexually mature. However, in the country, you are still young. It's a period which indicates sexual maturity. It means that you are sexually active. You can do sex, but don't forget to stay virgin. All right. In boys, stimulated by testosterone. So you'll find out that in male, uh, secondary sexual characteristics, as we saw that, uh, testosterone is the hormone which brings about this um which brings about these characteristics we said that testosterone has two functions if we can recall we said that the first one is uh, it brings about maturation of sperms number two it brings about secondary sexual characteristics in male what are those characteristics uh, the first puberty change is uh, an enlargement of the scrotum. It means that now the, 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 the testes, the testicles are going to become big. They are starting to become big. If you compare your testicles before, when you're still young, and then now you'll find out that those testicles are now too big. So they start to enlarge because of the testosterone being produced so that now it now uh these testicles can start to produce sperms as the testes and the scrotum continue to grow what does what does that mean if the testes and the scrotum they they they, they, they develop more it means that now the person is going to have uh, a big penis even the penis is going to enlarge it's going to become uh big i'm very sorry if you have a smaller one so the growth of Pubic hair, pubic hair also, um, these are the hair you find in uh, on the, your private parts. And then you find the facial hair, uh, hair under the armpits. Actually, you see that now the a guy becomes hairy, like you have beards. Yes, it, it shows that now you are mature. Then another one is development of muscles and deepening of the voice. However, some people, they have to go to the gym to show these muscles to come out. However, others are born like that. Others are born like that. You can comment down below and then tell us which kind of muscles do you have. Do you have the small ones or you have the big ones? All right. And so development of muscles, it means that now this person is muscular. Is it muscular? What about the secondary sexual characteristics in the female? We see that here we have changes which occur under the influence of estrogen. We saw that estrogen perform two functions. The first one, it is very important for secondary sexual characteristics in the female. The second one, it's also a thickening or development of the uterus uh, for implantation or uh, it, it develops or builds the uterus so that implantation or it prepares the uterus for implantation by making the endometrium, by making the uterus thick, vascular and granular, more thick. It must be thick, more, it, 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 it becomes thick. 
and it becomes more of uh, blood vessels. That's why you're saying that you're vascular. And then granular, it means uh, more glands. So the growth of the female sex organ, it means that now the vagina, the things we are going to become big. It can accommodate the penis. And then you're saying that it starts the menstruation. If you see that blood coming out, the nice one, and then you, you just know that now you are under uh, puberty. It means that you are develop then production of the ova it means that now if you tamper with the sex you are all going to become pregnant and then growth of the pubic hair that is the pubic hair that we are talking about you find them that yes you develop some hair yes here and under uh, armpits yes and then growth of growth and development of breasts yeah there are some people who don't have breasts it doesn't mean that uh, you are not mature you are you, yes you are mature then um, development of the breast, it means that now the breasts are what? Are big. Which kind of breast do you have? Hmm. I don't know. All right. Then you're saying that even hips. Yeah. However, you can also find this in male. Yeah. Why should male have hips? That's a lesson for another day. All right. Um, hmm. Development of the hips so that it, the, the, the hips can, uh, you can widen. Yes, you can widen. You can accommodate the developing baby. Yes. And then now, uh, uh, if you have seen the secondary sexual characteristics uh, in male and you have seen the secondary sexual characteristics in a female, it means that you are ready. If you go for sex, you are able to uh, conceive. You are becoming, you can become fertilized. So how are these ova and the sperms being generated? Formation of gametes. Remember, when you talk about gametes, uh, in this case, we are talking about spams and then you're also talking about ova remember if it's one is called ovum and then if there are many we call them over so this is a formation of the formation of the of, of the formation of the what of the of the gametes all right so now you're saying gametogenesis is the formation of the gametes is the formation of the what of the gametes in these gametes we are saying that it includes the sperms and also includes the ovum then during this process of gametogenesis the germ cell will undergo mitosis remember when we talk about mitosis we are having four cells four cells you have one cell undergoes meiosis one and then also another cell undergoes meiosis one uh-huh yes so you have one cell to form two have one cells forms two and then two forms four. It means that I have four cells, but all these four cells are all these four cells are haploid. They are what? They are haploid. And then this one is what is diploid. That's the meaning. So now, if you have meiosis, you form four cells. You form you produce haploid cells that are di uh, directly developed into gametes. Now these cells, when you it, it reaches meiosis, uh, meiosis two. Né? These are still cells. They have not yet developed into uh, sperm cells or ova. No, they have not yet developed. So after that, they have to undergo differentiation and then develop into uh, cells with the specific structures. So you're saying that, hence in male, meiosis is an integral part of uh, gametogenesis. It means that in, uh, in, 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 in animals, meiosis is a part of uh, gametogenesis or formation of sperms. So this is divided into two. Number one, male gametes formed by spermatogenesis. It means that now the formation of spermatozoa. And then uh, female gametes are formed by a process of genesis which means that formation of the formation of the gametes uh in uh female is is called genesis formation of what of over so it means that this is formation of sperms and then this is formation of ovum all right let's look at um spermatogenesis in detail formation of sperms the beginning the beginning of sperms. Yes, this is the beginning. This is sperms. Yes, sperms. And then this is beginning. So, so formation of sperms, the beginning of the sperms. Where do sperms begin from? Spermatogenesis is the formation of sperms. You have seen that. The process include, this is how we want it in exam. 
However, uh, other books will talk about a lot yeah, and detailed, but based on ex examination guidelines in South Africa, this is how we want it to be written on what? Uh, on the paper. So under the influence of testosterone, we give you a tick for mentioning the word testosterone. Yes, the diploid cell in the seminiferous tube. You have to tell us where these diploid cells uh, are found. They are found, the diploid cells in the seminiferous tubes. And then we give you a tick there of the cell undergoes mitosis, undergoes meiosis. So the word meiosis is also a key point. Uh, then you're saying that uh, to form a to form haploid sperm cells, to form four haploid sperm cells. Basically, that's what you want. And then you get four marks. So under the influence of testosterone, the diploid cell uh, in the seminiferous tube, yes, undergoes meiosis to form four haploid sperm cells simple no stress but you'll find out that people will talk about a lot the germ cells undergoes meiosis to produce four haploid cells called the spermatids and then uh the spermatids uh will mature to form the spermatozoa spermatozoa sorry uh from spermatozoa and each spermatozoa is made up of a head, middle piece, and a tail. That is the previous way how we used to explain it. But now uh, we need it to be explained like this. The reason why I put this here is because sometimes we can bring uh, a question and then you don't know which one is haploid, which one is diploid. Yes. So now, like this, you have the spermatogonium. These cells do undergo. We don't want this detailed part of it. The reason why I brought it like this, so that now you know that this is 2N, that this one, the first one is 2N, the second one is, and after meiosis one, they become 1N. And then under meiosis two, they remain 1N. Because 1N to versus 1N, if this is 23 chromosomes, even this one's gonna be 23 chromosomes. So it behaves like as if it is mitosis. But in meiosis one, there is decrease in the number of chromosome number. If you start with the 46, now you're gonna have 23, which means that there is a decrease in the chromosome number. Structure of the sperm. How does the sperm look like? I usually tell people that a sperm is like a human. Why do I say it's like a human? Why do I say it's like a human? Remember, a human has a head. Né? A human has uh, a chest. Né? A human has legs. In science, we can say that is a poda. Yes, foot. So it has, human has this. If you remove the head, you don't have a human. Sperm. Sperm has a head. Ne? Sperm has a middle piece. I'm just drawing a rough, a, a rough structure. Sperm has a tail. Ne? Sperm has a tail. So it means that if we call this a head, this I will call it middle piece. Then I will call this tail. Sometimes flagellum. So this is the middle piece, this is the head. Don't you see that it resembles a human? Yeah, it means that you come from where you... Remember that a human has hair. Ne? Also, the sperm has the acrosome. Remember a human has the brain, which controls the activities. Also, the sperm has the nucleus, which controls the activities.
See, remember a chest is for energy. Also the sperm is for energy. Middle piece is for energy. Remember legs are for lock motion. Also tail of flagellum is for local motion. So it means that we are in a picture. We live in a picture of a sperm. That's how we live. When, no, when we see someone, it seems like it's a picture. We see a moving sperm. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, guys. So now let's look at it, uh, the structure based on science. Yeah, sperm is made up of, number one, the head. We saw that the sperm has a head, which contains the acrosome, which looks like hair, and then that contains the enzyme to digest the what? The membrane of the what? Of the ovum during fertilization. So this, the, 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 what we want is the head contains acrosome, which contains uh, enzymes, which digest the membrane of the ovum during fertilization. So when it's like an adaptation that the head has acrosome, What's the function of acrosome? Contains enzymes. What's the function of the enzymes? To digest the membrane of the ovum during fertilization. So it's like the teeth on the human, which break down whatever you want to eat. So it has the nucleus that which contain the genetic material uh, for inheritance. Whenever you talk about the nucleus, you are talking about the genetic material. Then it has a middle piece. Middle piece with mitochondria is the power horse. Yes, mitochondria to provide the energy. We say that it has the mitochondria, it has the middle piece. Remember your chest is for energy. If your chest is weak, you don't have energy. If the middle piece of the sperm is weak, the sperm won't have energy. Then it has a tail which provide propulsion force, propulsion force for movement, propulsion force, it, it, like for locomotion. It gives the forward force, that's the meaning. So this is how the sperm looks like. You have a sperm, you have a middle piece, and then you have a tail. Then you're saying that if we bring it in exam, ask you what is A, you have to tell us the acrosome. Nucleus, middle piece, and then tail. What's the function of B? Uh, it contains a genetic material for inheritance. But A, it, it, it contains enzymes which digest the membrane of the ovum during fertilization or for fertilization. So you have to know. When you bring questions, you can say, write down the adaptation of the sperm for locomotion. Now you talk about the tail, and then you talk about the middle piece and the function. Provides propulsion force for locomotion, provide energy still for locomotion or for movement. So they are talking about for adaptation of the sperm to carry out movement. What about adaptation of the sperm for fertilization? Then you can talk about the the, 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 you can talk about the uh, the head, which has the acrosome, which digests the membrane of the ovum, and then you can also talk about the nucleus, which contain the genetic material for inheritance. So that is uh, the sperm. So that is the sperm in detail. Uh, let's look at uh, genesis, and then you find uh, you finalize with the structure of the ovum in detail. So eugenesis, eugenesis is the, is, eugenesis is the formation of the ovum. When we talk about formation of the ovum, uh, we saw it, process of eugenesis include, under the influence of FSH, yes, what happens? Uh, the diploid cell in the ovary undergoes mitosis, diploid cell. We saw them, the germ cells, under influence of this, uh, of, 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 of follicle stimulating hormone, the hormone that stimulates the follicle, the development of the follicle, the name is given gives the function, follicle stimulating hormone, hormone that stimulates the development of the follicle. This stimulates uh, the diploid cell uh, to undergo my, my, my mitosis, to, to multiply, to multiply these cells. And then only one will start uh, to form numerous follicles, but saying that only one cell inside the follicle enlarges and then undergoes meiosis. So only there are a lot of this, but only one will enlarge to become now the primary oocyte. Uh, we just say only one cell uh, inside the follicle enlarges to uh, enlarges and then it will undergo meiosis. Now this cell is gonna start growing under meiosis one. It means that this is uh, meiosis, meiosis 
one. Yes. And then you're saying that of the fossils that are being produced, only one. It means that now it then it undergoes meiosis too. Yes. It is supposed to undergo meiosis too. Meiosis T. Yes. But now, once it undergoes meiosis too, not all of them are going to become ovum. Only one, only one, only one. The remaining are going to become polar bodies. So we don't, uh, these ones, they degenerate. They don't become big. Only one is going to become big or it's going to develop. And then uh, survives to form a mature haploid cell. It means that now this is to end. And then this is still to end because meiosis has not taken place. So since meiosis one has taken place, this one is going to be one n. It's going to be one n. Also, this one is going to be one n. This is one n. One n. One n. One n. But only one will develop. So this is the one which is going to form a mature ovum. Yes. So um, if this is forty six. This is going to be 46, it's going to be 23, 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 23, 23. So basically, that's the meaning. And then you're saying that uh, one cell inside a follicle, uh, one cell, uh, one cell inside a follicle, uh, yes, will undergo meiosis and then form four haploid cells. The four haploid cells will break up and then one cell will mature to form the Ovum. So basically, this is what we, we are trying to explain. In the exam, this is how we bring it. Then let's look at the structure of the ovum. So of the ovum, you don't need to talk about the detailed part of the ovum. We want to talk about the few parts of the ovum. Parts and function, the gel-like structure, that's the outside part of the ovum, which protect. Ne? Don't talk about the... Um, Zona perucida, no, we don't talk about those things. We just talk about jet like layer. Yes, so it, it combines all those layers which are included there. So you those other parts, you will see them when you go to the university. Then the haploid nucleus contain genetic material for inheritance. Haploid nucleus contain genetic material for inheritance. And then lastly, we say that whenever you talk about nucleus, you're talking about inheritance or genetic material. Then uh, the cytoplasm, whenever I talk about the cytoplasm, cytoplasm we are talking about the fluid of the cell where the activities take place. Cyto, cyto, cyto comes from the word cell. And then plasm means fluid. Yeah, the fluid of the cell, yes. Nucleoplasm. Fluid, nucleus, the, the, the fluid of the nucleus. So that's the meaning. Cytoplasm, the fluid of the, 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 the cell. So this is how it looks like. This is a gel-like layer. You see, this is a gel-like layer, but uh, we have specific names for that, but we don't talk about those names. Then you have the cytoplasm. Then you have what called the nucleus. So there are three parts you need to know when it comes to the exams. So if they are like that, now you can name them, I think. The first one is, you can tell me, first one is, the second one is, and then the third one is. Let's see if you have got it right. The first one is the gel-like layer, the second one is the cytoplasm, and then the third one is the nucleus. Basically, that's the structure of the, of the ovum, the menstrual cycle. Mm, the menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycle, when you talk about the menstrual cycle, menstrual cycle is divided into two. We divided into what's called the uterine cycle and then the ovarian cycle. Uh, when it comes to the menstrual cycle, this is what you need to know. Progesterone. You need to know that these two, they come from, these two, they come from the brain. Which part of the brain? Hypophysis or what you call the pituitary gland. So they come from the brain. And then these two, they come from the ovary. But you have to be specific. This one come from the graphian follicle, while this one comes from corpus lorium. Yes, but these are ovaries. So you also need to know what you need to know about that these two 
hormones, they work under ovary. They work under ovary. Therefore, we undergo what we call the ovarian cycle. So they, whenever you explain, ask you to explain the ovarian cycle, these are the hormones you are supposed to talk about. While these ones, they still in the ovary, ovary, but uh, they work specific. The specific, no, they don't work in the ovary. This one they work in the uh, in the uterus, uterus, uter, uter. They work in the uterus. So therefore, uh, they, they, they are under what you call the uterine cycle. So this is the brief explanation of these hormones and how you need to know. Yes, so now you have to know the function of each hormone. Once you know the function of each hormone, then the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle and the menstrual cycle is almost done. You need to know that uh, in the brief, you need to know that follicle-symmetric hormone is the hormone that stimulates the development of the follicle. Donizing hormone, this one, uh, this one triggers ovulation and also changes the empty graphene the follicle to capsulium. This one, uh, it, it's, now we are going to the uterus. It, this one means that uh, it, it, it prepares the body for implantation. Yes, for implantation by making the, the uterus, you see, by making the uterus thick, vascular, and granular. And then also this one uh, is very important. Uh, is very important uh, in maintaining pregnancy, like building a uh, building and then you rent it to someone, the other person will come and uh, maintain it. So it means that oestrogen builds it, builds the uterus, but the progesterone will come and maintain what oestrogen has built. Yeah, you will be talking about the, the, the endometrium. It maintains, it makes the endometrium wall more thicker, more vascular and granular. But we saw that the endometrium, the uterine wall, and the uterine cavity, all of them are uterus. It's a part of uterus. So now if we go back here and we see uh, the ovarian cycle, or the menstrual cycle, we shall see that uh, the menstrual cycle is divided into two. As we said, the uterine cycle, it means that this is occur, this occurs in the uterus or this occurs in the ovary. And then you're saying that uh, we saw this structure, uh, this the development, hmm? the development from zero, day zero to day 28. And then you're saying that ovarian cycle, the development, this is menstruation and the development of the ovarian, uh, of, the, of the uterus, then we call it the uterine cycle. So these are the two, we have seen the hormones which affect this. You see, now the blood vessels have thickened and then the menstruation has occurred. So uh, let's look at uh, the events of the uterine cycle events of the uterine cycle. I know you guys were tired of it. Uh, let's stop here.